who knows? He could be one of those, you know, 30 plus million dollar centers and you feel good about it on your team. So I think with Klingon, he has a high floor and that there's still untapped upside perhaps that he could get into. So the big thing uh, from an NBA perspective is going to be this battle between Zach Eady and Donovan Klingon. Klingon has been higher on every mock draft. Eady, two-time national player of the year who had had an unbelievable tournament. I will ask you if the result of last night's event changes your draft board at all. No, I think Klingon, I had him three going into the event. I still have him three right now. Uh, I thought Klingon, you know, like I said earlier, I thought Edie completely outplayed him the first eight, 10 minutes of the game. Klingon just looked overmatched, like mouse in the house level stuff, right? But Klingon got way better throughout the course of the game. Uh, you know, when I was sitting up close in the second half, I was really like watching those guys battle on the post. And you could just see Klingon doing such a good job at keeping Edie off his preferred spots. And uh, I think I think some of the stuff Klingon did, he didn't win uh, most outstanding player of the final four. It was his teammate Newton who did a great job. Um, but Klingon, I thought some of the stuff he did in that second half to help UConn create separation with some beyond the box score stuff with making things harder on Edie, pushing him out to have a, a deeper hook shot, a tougher hook shot keeping him out of his position on top of, you know, just his standard uh, deterrence around the basket against, you know, Purdue's, you know, underwhelming team uh, around Edie. And I will say that Dan Hurley did a very good job in this deal because he came to one of the first timeouts and he, and this is as Edie was cooking early and he's like, we've got to change it up. Like, we can't just play this guy straight up. Like, whether that means digging down, whether that means... Because I think what they were going to do is they were going to make sure, all right, we're staying attached to all the shooters. You know, it's the it's the analytics play. This guy's not going to be hitting three. So if this guy scores a bunch of points and this guy uh, keeps him in it, that's fine. But what we're not going to do is allow him to, you know, pass out of that constantly and then give them open threes. Like they didn't, they might have hit one three the whole game. I don't, I don't even know. I, I don't know what the they final did. total it was. It was one, one for seven. I mean, that's incredible. And so they were just going to decide, one dude, for seven. you got, you're going to have to, like, this guy's going to have to make 40 field goals in order to beat us. And, but then he was cooking so much earlier that they start bringing an extra guy. They make him start seeing other looks and, obviously made life really hard on them. And then on offense, like UConn just gets great shot after great shot. Like the oh, movement, man. the unselfishness. And there's a lot of possessions where I could see Klingon being very, very handy on an NBA level in this way more so than Edie. There's possessions where it feels like he set six screens and is running all these Dribble handoffs. It's crazy. Oh, man. Kling Klingon is going to be an even better NBA player than he was a college player. Uh, like, Can you imagine him? If you look at the teams right now in the top 10, not a lot of them need centers, right? Not mm -hmm. a lot of them need centers. Detroit, you know, they could use a center. Washington, some of these teams, they could. Charlotte has Mark Williams. San Antonio has Wemby. Maybe they go two bigs. Portland, Ayton. Pirtle in Toronto. Utah's got a bunch of bigs. Houston's You're getting got down to you. it. But You're but you know who, but, but you know who does need a center? Your Memphis. Memphis Grizzlies. Can you imagine Donovan Klingon setting screens for John Morant and Desmond Bain operating in the front court alongside Jaron Jackson? He could play with J Jackson. He could play as the lone big on the floor. Yeah, I mean, I think you guys, you're the obvious spot for Klingon to optimize who he can be in his career and also from a, a fit standpoint with what you guys need. To me, the Grizzlies are the clear, far and away, best spot for Donovan Klingon, assuming he does declare. And no pressure. Just oh, none. None. Zero. None. Zero Literally pressure. zero pressure. Zero pressure. To be Klingon any kind, anything other than a role player. Yes, anything other than like doing like, this is why I have Klingon at three on my board because at a minimum with Klingon, you are going to get 
a high level rim protector who has the mobility to not just drop, but hedge, blitz, maybe switch occasionally. You have a guy who can rebound, who's tough, who's an amazing teammate, who is somebody who sets six screens in a possession, like you said. He's good with the ball in his hands. He can make passes out of dribble handoff, short roll, and he's a really good finisher around the basket. At a minimum, if you get that, you're going to get a good NBA player. And on top of that, you look at his improvement with his footwork on the post from his freshman year to his sophomore year, his improvement with his foul rate. He's an even better defender as a sophomore than he was as a freshman. If he continues to get better every year, he thinks he'll be a shooter at some point. He shot threes back in high school. He's never shot them well. Maybe that can be untapped at some point in his future. I doubt it. But if you get the the improved post play, continuing to improve on defense who knows he could be one of those you know 30 plus million dollar centers and you feel good about it on your team so i think with Klingon, he has a high floor and that there's still t- untapped upside perhaps that he could get into in the right situation situation in the nba and as you said there'd be no pressure in memphis he doesn't need to get there whereas if it's the, if it's the wizards that get him it's like That's oh right. we got a role player oh my right. god this is horrible and on the other side, I have just gone back and forth on the Edie thing, and I think I'm settled on he's probably got a place in the NBA. He's ne- he's not going to be a high level player in the NBA. Like there he's were times be last a rotation night, guy. He'll be a rotation guy. Right? There's times when I'm watching him last night, and I'm like, you ain't doing this bullshit in the NBA. And he looks slow, and it's I get it. He's skilled. He is better than people have given credit for. He's not just tall. Okay, yeah. Let's get that out of the way. On the other hand, how much of what he does translates to a much faster, much more athletic NBA. And that's where I, you know, again, the guy is outstanding as a college player. We're drafting college teams. I want Zach Eady. But in terms of the next level, I I would be shocked if he turned into a star. So it's just oh, about managing star? what you yeah, yeah. But he is a superstar on this level. And that's sure. what I'm saying. I will say this though, Chris. I mean, I, I'm I, I don't think Edie will be a superstar at all in the NBA. But in terms of like being a, a rotation guy who can contribute to a winning team, I do think Edie. You have to consider like people talk about some of the lob dunks. Uh, UConn's backup center Samson Johnson had two of the the lob dunks he had, uh, kind of with Edie and drop coverage. You can look at that and say, well, Edie looked a little bit, a little bit slow recovering on those. You can talk about the post game that Edie has. But so in, in, in college, he posts up, he posts up on 64% of his possessions, according to Synergy. 64% of his possessions on offense are post ups. That is not going to be the number in the NBA. In the NBA, he's going to have a point guard, regardless of where he goes, that can run a high pick and roll with a spaced out floor and get the seven foot four guy some easy shots at the basket where he's that big target. And so I think you're going to see Edie's role change in the NBA in ways that produce offensive. Uh, Braden Smith, all due respect, not an NBA guy, can't show. And on defense, some of those, you know, possessions with him. They don't have the the size of the perimeter defenders that a lot of NBA systems are going to have either. So I think with Edie, there is a place for him. Fit it will matter significantly for Edie, considering his skill set. But I don't think a team is going to draft Zach Edie unless the fit is right. You know what you know what I mean? Like I, I just can't see a team drafting Zach Edie where it doesn't make sense. A, a team that's that is that's going to draft Edie is going to be like, oh, oh, the Miami Heat. They now have Bam Adebayo shooting threes. Oh, Bam Adebayo, who is one of the best perimeter defenders as a big man, that could actually work. ED and drop coverage, Bam on the perimeter. It's going to be a team like that where you're like, oh, this actually makes some sense. So I, I think with ED, I feel good about the fact that I would assume a team drafts him where the fit makes sense, which could, should be good for his career. <laughs> 